Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to another We Love to Dance podcast. In today, we are with one amazing dancer from London. Being a great dancer is only half of the work. So how can you use this gift to its full potential and make a living out of it? Well, that's what Beyond the Steps is all about. Each week, I will bring you a message to help you grow as a dancer. So get ready for some valuable information and let's get started. started, started. I, I, I really wanted to know because I, I started, one of the things that I wanted to do this podcast is because I, I started doing Beyond the Move, that's, that's your dance program. But um, before I got to that, I, I wanted to know about the person because for someone who has founded su su such an amazing pro project, ha ha you have to have like some amazing backstory or something like um, that inspired you to do this program. So tell us a, a little bit about your dance journey, about uh, your dance life, how it started, how is it is right now. Uh, so that me, me and the audience can get to know you a little bit better. All right. So, uh, yeah, first of all, thanks for having me, Luis. And uh, my name is Nikhil. Um, most people know me as uh, Nikhil Judat because I'm, I'm, I'm part of the Judat crew, which is one of the best crew when it's come to uh, freestyle dance in Europe. So, um, yeah, I started dancing about 17 years ago now. And uh, we started in, I started in Paris and now I currently live in London. So uh, just um, to kind of uh, summarize my, my dance journey, at the beginning, I used to play football, so soccer a lot. Oh. And then uh, whenever I go to play soccer, there was a dance studio um, that I had to pass um, by. To, and one day I was curious enough to say, you know what, I want to go there and see what's going on because I keep listening to the music, but I never check what's going on there because, you know, football was more my priority yeah. at that time. Then once I went there and I stood in front of the, the, the door and I was watching, you know, the, the people dancing, moving, and I found it quite interesting. And all of a sudden the, the teacher came to me and said, hey, do you want to try this? And I'm like, uh, oh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about it, you know. <laughs> and then he said, you know what? And then I told him how much I know how much if I wanted to try. And he said, um, actually, you can come next weekend for free. And then if you really like it, then we can discuss further. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna make uh, give it a try. And then I gave it, I gave it a try. I liked it, and I'm still dancing till today. So I definitely more than liking it now. I think uh, you know it's something that is part of my life, and uh, and I have a true passion for dancing. So well, um, that that's what I would say. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I'm I'm laughing because the um, I I feel what you're saying because uh, I st we started the I started dancing and we. Uh, Similar thing like you because I, but me for I was from karate. I I, mm. uh, I was doing karate from like also like ten years, and uh, me and my friend we were walking by the our gym where we train, and there's also a class, uh, and we we're like, oh, that is so cool. We have to try it. And I, I, that's why I was like because it's so it was similar. The only difference. Yeah. The only difference that I have to be honest is that one of the things that we also tried is because there was a lot of girls in the hip hop class. And we are, <laughs> that's true. And we are for a, from a karate background and there's not a lot of girls. And we were like yeah. teenagers, like, like 14. You know how 14 we are. So yeah, that's, that, that's why I was smiling because I was remembering in my mind like how we was back in those days. So you yeah, started yeah. dancing? How, how was it uh, after that, after you started? Um, uh, when, I, when I started, um, I didn't have any expectation, you know, from dancing. I just know that um, it was a good feeling and I wanted to do it. And then at the beginning, I was dancing only when I go to the studio, right? So once a week. And then very quickly, I started to start training at home as well. So basically, I would practice in the studio with my teacher. 
And then all the week, I would also put the music and train at home. So all, all of a sudden, it became, it became really part of my uh, daily routine. But um, this happened very organically. So uh, fast forward two years after that, I told to my teacher that I wanted to do my first battle. And then he said, you know, I'm going to bring you to a battle and then uh, you can, uh, you can um, start, um, you know, taking part of competitions. And then on that day, in that first battle is the, the first time that I also met the UDAT crew, like Jimmy, um, Samuel, UDAT, all the other uh, uh, crew members that are, that are a part of, our, we are part of the same crew now. I met them on the same day. And then after that, we just kept on going, you know, kept on uh, doing a lot of competition and uh, slowly but surely we started build, making a name for ourselves in the, in the freestyle game, uh, yeah, as a dancer. And then, uh, and then I would say around, yeah, around 2012, I've been doing, you know, so many dance competition and stuff like that. And, uh, and my name started to be a bit more out there. And then I started to ask myself, okay, what do I really want to do with dancing? You know, because um, yeah, dancing is great, but it seems like I'm starting to have you know a few, a few gigs here and there, making some money with it, but nothing very stable. So I started to really think about, okay, I, I could potentially transform this into a career. You know, and um, I moved to London. Then in 2012, this is when I moved to London. And then I, I, I kept on dancing and doing some other stuff on, on the other side. And then recently, when I say recently, it's about three, three years ago, I started to focus on understanding online and dance and how I could potentially combine them to create um, a business out of it. And this is now what I'm doing with Beyond the Move. The, that that's amazing and i, I can this is not a, a commercial as in effect <laughs> i have to tell you guys that that you're watching this i never met i never met nickel we don't know each other before before this this podcast and he was such an, an amazing guy to have like to even like let's do this without no without no drama like, like let's do this like let, that, that's that says a lot that says for me. That says a lot about about you as a person and as a, a dancer and even as an hip hop artist. Because one of the things that uh, it changed my myself when I was in New York is that I, I saw the true nature uh, nature of hip hop. That is not just the dancing; is the knowledge. And uh, since that, I started to try to understand more about everything that makes up that that culture and um, seeing seeing people when i see people, some someone who has like that desire to help others to share and that that makes me want to share their their their, their stories and share their passion share their their project and that's why i i even even though i'm a, a choreographer uh, i i really wanted to to do your 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 dance course and I'm, I'm actually loving it to be honest i mean because it it, it gives me the tools um it gives me the tools to to create something that it's not like your way of dancing uh mm -hmm. this is actually some customer feedback <laughs> we're doing podcast but it's it's really good <laughs> because of that because i feel that i'm training but but you're giving me just some tools and then I can I can also be myself. And when we're yeah, like exactly. when we are learning choreography, most of the times we are learning to be with other other the choreographer or other person want us to be. And mm -hmm. it's good to having some tools that makes me create my own my own style in freestyling because in choreo it, it's I already know that, but in freestyle I didn't know it. So mm -hmm. that's. That's why I, I, one of the things I, I really wanted to, to ask you is um, why did you want to, to create this program? Okay, we know about the, the you wanted to make a, your a business model, but I, something tells me that it, it's something more, it's something about... 
Of course. I mean, uh, obviously, um, I wanted to kind of uh, fast forward to not make my journey way too long to explain. But yeah. um, obviously, the 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 goal behind behind beyond the move is the fact that I realize how important it is to have a good surrounding when you start when you are dancing, basically, because the the. I was fortunate enough to be in Paris when I started dancing, but most importantly, I was fortunate enough to have really uh, good teachers around me. So these people were there to, to guide me. And uh, it was not just the uh, dance teachers for me, there were some kind of mentors. And I, um, I, meet, I met different teachers at different times in my dance journey, but always the timing was perfect. It was always what I needed to go to the next level in my dance journey. And this is something that uh, to me, this was the most valuable things that I had that contribute to uh, me being the dancer that I am today. So I wanted to create something where I could potentially um, help dancers to have this kind of surrendering because with the power of technology then even though you are far away you're not living in Paris or you're not living in Germany or UK right but even though dancing is not uh, really well developed in your city but I wanted to be able to give access to this kind of knowledge and the kind of information I had at the beginning to help me grow much faster, you know? So this is really my, pur my, my purpose with that is being able to create a place where dancers from wherever you are, you feel like home because you know that there's a community that, you, that will be able to support you. But not only that, you will also get access to really uh, useful knowledge that will help you fast track your results. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. And um, you also beyond the, the, the classes, you also have the community where we're get, we, we are uh, inspired to, to share our work, to share what we are learning, the, the, the exercises that are being done. Uh, mm -hmm. And, that, and I, I think that's also, also awesome because um, being, being dancing just by your, your own, it's not, it's not the purpose of dance. Dance is about sharing. And that's yeah. what I, one of the things that I really like. I, I, to be honest, I, I didn't post anything uh, until now, but uh, maybe, maybe in the future. Uh, what can you tell us more about uh, the BTM, the structure? Because I can talk about it because yeah. I, 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 I've done it. I've done it. I'm doing it. I'm still not mm -hmm. I've been doing it for one month, uh, but uh, still has, there's a lot of knowledge. There's a lot of classes. There's things that make make you like grind and make you like go back to the being and try to do it again and see if you improve. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. I want to know from the source what um, what what BTM for the people who are listening and that um, that probably wants are in the fence like oh, what? I want I want to know more about what is beyond the moves. You all you know okay. the purpose. What can, people can have by doing your program? All right. To, to be honest with you, Louis, uh, instead of talking about BTM, I would like to be able to you know to serve your audience as much as possible for during the time that we have. Okay. If they really want to know about Beyond the Move, I mean we've been talking about it a little bit, so they can always go to the website and see okay. all the information. But instead. What do you think like your audience would need? I mean, uh, uh, what kind of advice would you like, you know, to get out of me for your audience? And then okay. we can go from there, you know? So, to, be yeah. honest, to be honest, we also, uh, that's one of the things that I was doing after because we have a, um, one thing that is all, there's tips uh, and uh, we always ask uh, the, the interviewed to give five tips about something mm -hmm. and it's always a surprise so the okay. five tips the 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 five tips that i want you to give is what five tips do you would you give to a, a freestyle dancer or uh, someone who wants to improve their freestyle 
for death battles if or not but uh, yeah. you can you can put it on your own words and how you uh, with your own knowledge okay five um all right so i would say first to really take the time to understand you as a dancer as a freestyle dancer what i mean by that is i do believe that each person have their own voice you know like the way you talk is not the way i talk the way someone else talk is not the way we talk right so each person have their own voice and therefore i also believe that each person have their own way of moving so the first thing is to really get familiar with your way of moving, your natural way of moving. And this take time. So that would be the first thing, is to really, really take time to understand you as a freestyle dancer, the way you are moving, why you are moving this way. And once you understand that, and the earlier you understand that, the, the better you will be able to, to um, adjust, make adjustments and progress even faster because you truly understand yourself, right? So that would be the first thing. But one, once again, this will not happen overnight, but it's good to cultivate this mindset from the beginning. The second one I would say is that, yes, you're gonna be in your journey seeing a lot of dancers, get inspired, but do not compare yourself with other dancers. I know you probably, heard that before do not compare yourself with other dancers so you probably heard it and you probably think that you know about it that's for sure that's okay but unconsciously this is something that we tend to do uh, naturally which is we're going to watch someone and because we are doing pretty much the same thing as this person unconsciously we start comparing ourselves so basically it's something that happens so much that it often happen in the background so that we don't realize the effect that can have on us until is really, really impacting your dance. So what I would say is understand that you are watching, getting inspired, or even when you are watching other dancers, you are actually training. But the moment you feel that you are comparing yourself with other dancers, you need to create awareness about this so that you can detach yourself from those feelings because this will cripple your um, progress as a dancer. So number one, understand yourself. Secondly, get inspired. But when you, whenever you feel that you are comparing too much with others, then you need to create awareness about it and stop it as soon as possible. So that's the, um, the, uh, the second one. The third one I would say is, it is very important to understand the power of being present when you are freestyling. Because freestyle is something that you don't really know what's going on second to second, right? So therefore, the best way for you to make the most out of the moment is to be in that moment and not doing nothing else. When you are dancing, it's not really the time to think, right? Yes, you can have thoughts coming, that's all right, but you don't interact with your thoughts. Therefore, you don't engage with them. Therefore, you're not actually, you know, dancing and thinking. You want to just focus on dancing and being present in that moment so that you can really tap into your um, intuition when you are dancing. And then once again, this is something that you will see some dancers who have a lot of experience when it's come to freestyle, they seem to be doing that very naturally, but it's something that you can cultivate from the beginning. So you don't have to be a very experienced dancer or you've been dancing for many years to be able to cultivate that. You can start cultivating this from the get-go and it will make your dance journey easier as well, all right? So that would be the third one. Um, the fourth one, the fourth one it, I would say is consistency. 
is key. Like I repeat that again, consistency is key. And I would rather choose consistency always over intensity because you might feel very excited about freestyle dance at the beginning and you want to train literally every day and you're going hard, 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 hard. If you want to do that, yes, you can, right? But in the long term, you really want to have a system that will help you train on a regular basis, not for two months, not for three months, but for years to come, right? So if you have someone who's been going hard for three months and you have someone else who's been training maybe once or twice a week for two years, this person will always be the one that has that go hard for a short period of time. But this, when you know about it, you create awareness about it, you will be much more strategic about it. So what I'm trying to say is just kind of warn you about that from the get-go. Consistency is key because, yeah, you can't afford to, to um, stop for quite some time and come back when you feel excited about it again and stop again. You see what I mean? It doesn't work this way. So focus on finding ways to adapt your lifestyle with your dance lifestyle to make it work and so you can be consistent for years to come. Not for months, but for years to come. All right, so that will be number four. And number f- <laughs> what? Yeah, it's yeah. all right, it won. <laughs> <It's-> <laughs> So just to reiterate so far, so we said um, the first one was, um, okay, now I don't even remember what I said. No problem. <laughs> but, no, um, no, yeah. no problem, no problem. Just, I just, I, I have to let it out because you, mm-hmm. you, you speak so, you're, you're, you're very fluent, right? you're very, very fluent, like, and you're very articulate. And then, so don't worry, just one more and uh, just one more, then I can okay. really find it. All right, so yeah, guys, you're gonna need to rewind the video to check out the other one. <laughs> All right, so um, yeah, the last one, what would I say? Yeah. I would Don't say worry, the last because I can, one, cut, I can cut it. I can cut it, no yeah, problem. No, that's all right. Uh, I would say the last one is to understand that uh, being different is better than being better. This is probably the best advice that I received uh, in my dance journey. Being different is better than being better. The dance industry can be a very competitive place, right? But when you understand that you don't have to chase the, the, the number one place, to stand out. You don't have to be the best to stand out. And the thing is, being the best in the dance industry is very subjective. You know, you might be the best for someone and not for someone else. You see what I mean? So it's almost like chasing something that is um, not really reachable, right? Because it's very subjective. So instead of focusing on being the best, what if you could just focus on being you? which is being different, right? So understanding, and and it's kind of relate to what I said first, is understanding yourself so well that you understand your true voice. And when you focus on that, it's impossible to not be different because you are already a different person and there is no one like you and there is no one moving like you, right? So therefore you really truly need to embrace that to a point where you're not chasing being the best or you're not even trying to be you know, better than someone else because you just wanna be you and ultimate, ultimately being different, right? So that's what I would say would be the last one. That yeah. was very inspiring. That was like very inspiring. <laughs> Like, that was a very inspiring quote. The <laughs> like, I really, I really enjoy it. Uh, tell me, just, just two more things. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first, first, 
what is the best moment or the, the one moment in dance that you enjoy the most? Even if, even if it was like brief or even if it was like when you were um, in the earlier days or even now, what is the moment that made you be more happier dancing? Um, honestly, I don't necessarily have like a moment in dance that I was like, oh my gosh, I mean, yeah, uh, this this moment I will never forget about it. But on the other side, on the other side, on, I've got like thousands of moments <laughs> like that. You see what I mean? Yeah. Because I I honestly feel like dance for me is 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 part of my lifestyle. Like everything that I do is around dancing, directly or indirectly, right? So, so uh, even though when I'm uh, in front of my computer working right now, I'm not dancing, but chances are what I'm doing on my computer is related to dancing. You see what I mean? So therefore, it became so much part of my life that so many details, so many small moments become these moments that I appreciate, you see? So if I play the music and be able to dance for one hour and a half, I'm so happy about that, you know? If I'm able to, to go and judge a competition, I'm, so, I'm really happy about that. The fact that I'm sitting right now with you and talking with you, exchanging and talking about dancing, something that we love, I do appreciate that moment as well. And I will not forget it. You see what I mean? So yeah. that's the way I see it. Honestly, I don't have one moment, but so many uh, small moments in the dance world that I have the opportunity to experience. I cherish it and I embrace it. And yeah, that's why you're, uh, you're not rating them because they all uh, they all are special to you. Yeah. I, I that's that, that's how you feel like and that's truly a really good way uh, of saying things and I, I really think that you have a really positive mindset for a dancer and that's actually one of the things as you said that uh, really stands out being positive so I really want as you are such an, a positive person I wanted to end it in a positive note what advice would you give to young uh, upcoming dancers like uh, if i'm 14 and i want to start dancing but i'm i'm not sure of myself i'm not sure if i'm going to make it as a dancer i'm not sure if i have the skills i'm not make sure if i'm going to make money and it's a tough business we both know that so based on your experience experience that is different from mine that i'm both in portugal you're in london what advice would you give To be honest, um, I think the advice that I will give, maybe if you are 14, you may not like fully grasp it at the moment. And maybe you will, uh, you know, understand it much better later. But honestly, I would say that if you are extremely passionate about dancing, All the rest will fold out, will, will, will fold, will unfold at the right time, at the right timing, and everything gonna be fine. Like, honestly, everything gonna be all right. That's only if you are extremely passionate about dancing. That's what I would say. So my, my, my advice is do whatever you can to preserve that love that you have for dance and do whatever you can to get a little bit better every day. If you manage to do these two things, which is mastering your craft on a regular basis, becoming better every single day, right? I mean, when I say every single day, like on a regular basis, right? And secondly, you manage to preserve the love that you have for dancing. Therefore, when you have challenges and stuff like that, you still want to keep at it. Then you will see the answers will come slowly but surely. That's, that's for sure. Because I cannot 
I mean, you will not have the same dance journey as me. You will not have the same dance journey as Louis. You know, we, we each, each one of us, we have different um, dance journey, but we find out about our journey in the process, right? But one thing for sure, I do love dancing and I keep practicing and trying to get better at it and preserve my, my love for it. And then the rest, it just happened. It falls, yeah. It it's definitely worth. I don't know if it was with you, with but when I was, I don't know, when I was like like that, 16, My all my friends and parents were saying like, dancing is, is very hard. No one makes money dancing, and still, we made it. So it's possible if you keep your love for dancing and uh, and keep trying. Never give up your dream. That's what, what I always say. And uh, yeah, thank you. and. And okay. one thing, sorry, one thing is that I know this can sound cheesy and I don't want you to overlook this um, advice. So instead, maybe see it as a strategy, right? So instead of thinking about it like, okay, I've heard this before. Oh yeah, I already love dancing. No, no, no. See it as a, as a strategy. And maybe that this way, you will be able to implement it when you need it. Right. Because once again, the fact that we hear things like, you know, uh, preserve your love for dancing and, uh, you know, and let it go and things will unfold. No, I, I'm not just saying this to to sounds good. If you understand the power behind it, then you can transform that into a strategy to implement for your dance journey. All right. So that's what I wanted to add as well. Yeah, that that it's so dope. Yeah, thanks for the advice and thank you for the time, uh, people. Uh, there's. Uh, do you want to say something else before we go? Um, no, no, that's it. No. <laughs> I just want to say, like, really, uh, really uh, thank thank you from the bottom of my heart for for your time, for being such so kind with your time, with your, with all the advice, with everything to for building a platform that gives space for other people to shine to learn to teach to share and for me that is what is hip-hop all about please make sure you you check out beyond the moves please make sure you check out nickel i think i said the name right uh make sure i'm gonna put the the links here below um sub sub subscribe to our channel if you enjoy your co our content and uh, we'll see in, in another time thank you so much again peace <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye, guys.